Hey brothers and sisters and welcome to another Last Chance Ministries video session. I, I wanted to first and foremost come on here and just ask you all to continue to pray for one another. Spiritual warfare attacks are getting more and more intense. Um, a sister in Christ last night in the chat room, Amanda Lynn, said that, you know, it, the spiritual attacks are coming against her and her family. We know that time is drawing nigh that Jesus is com coming soon, and it can't be far off. It cannot be far off at all. It's, it, it's close. It's very close. And um, I just want to ask you guys to pray for us, you know, I mean, I get these uneasy feelings about things. And, and I don't know how to, it's not something you can shake because sometimes it's the enemy putting, you know, negative thoughts in your head. And I rebuke him right now in Jesus' name and plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Last night, as me and my brother in Christ, Michael, my brother in this life as well, because he is like a brother to me. I mean, it's like I want to talk to him every day just, just to be able to tell him how I feel because there's not a lot of people I can talk to about how I feel because... It's a man thing, you know, basically. It's a man thing. It's not anything to do with just anybody. It's just I can talk to him, and he understands my feelings aren't just, you know, crazy stuff. It's actually what's on my heart. I was telling him last night about how I had a little bit of a vision of a dream or whatever the night before that, and how it was like of these old cottage-type apartments, and I could see the kitchen, and I could see, like, it, you could just see it was a little cozy and, and old. I mean, it was old, old places. And I told him, I said, you know, I could live in a place like that. I could live in an old an old building with, you know, an apartment building with hardly just anything. I don't need no necessities. As long as I have what I can do for God, which is the, my computer, that's it. I don't care. I really don't. I mean, I, I don't need any fancy stuff. I don't want anything. I, I just want Jesus. I, I, I just... I, I keep thinking about how selfish the American life is. You know, people have, but yet they don't have enough. They continue to want more and more and more and more. I mean, like, you look at these people that's got big fancy homes and cars and businesses and, and, and they got jobs that, that they make buku bucks on, you know? But yet they're always looking for a way to make more, make more money. You know, you can't be happy with what you got. You got to continue going. Well, I can honestly tell you, I am happy with everything that God has given me. I'm happy with my family, my friends, my loved ones. I mean, I don't understand a lot of people, but I love everybody. I'm happy with what we have here in our home. I'm not, I'm not trying to find like, you know, any big fancy place. I don't want it. I just want what I've got. And I don't. I just want to see Jesus come. That's what my, my, my dream, my, my prayer is that Jesus will come soon to take us home. I wanted to please ask someone to help me with this dream I had last night, okay? I know that one thing was I was doing the right thing. And in this dream, I would not stop until I got the right thing done. I'm not saying it's significant or anything or biblical or anything. It's, it's, to me, it's godly because I was doing what was right regardless of what people thought. In this dream, in this dream, I used to work for a, a grocery store, and it was a chain. It wasn't no little mom and pop. It was a chain store, and so uh, you know, a lot of the stores are d designed the same way and everything. But anyway, I was, uh, and this woman, her name was Alice in 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 the uh, dream. Now, when I worked at the store, there wasn't Alice who worked in the office. She wasn't uh, nothing more than like just a, I guess you'd say a a shift manager in the office. Uh, she wasn't like there was the head the head clerk or the head cashier or whatever you want to call her. I think she was like probably right beneath her or beneath the one beneath her. I don't know, but anyway, she was she was pretty you know big in the company as far as you know being a boss. But in this dream, there was an Alice, but it wasn't her. But I think the woman was kind of like her, you know, the truthful kind that you could go to and tell her something something was wrong. See, because in that job, the manager had no authority over nothing because we were under a union. Only other union workers could help union workers, or basically, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, like I was saying, you know, it was like um, I was go I was going into work, okay, and as I was going into work, I, uh, I, I guess I just was starting out, but I had been there. I was returning as an employee. And, and, and Alice, the Alice that was playing, you know, was Alice in the dream. She was happy to see me come back because when I was there, I was one of the, I guess you could say one of the best cashier or one of the good cashiers, not best. I'm not best at anything. I was a good cashier. I mean, I'd done my job. People really liked my personality because, I mean, I don't, 
I'm not out to try to make myself bigger than what I am. I am just who I am. God has made me the person I am. I love people. I love being around people. Well, back then more so than now, being around people now, I can't, I can't be around people that cuss and act like the world. I just cannot do it anymore. I can't. I cannot do it no more. I can't handle worldly activity or worldly talk or nothing. But in this dream, there was a, a black girl. She was a, a bigger black girl, full-figured black girl working in the office. And I was like walking around, I don't know, looking to get on a cash register to do, you know, to say, well, which one do I get on? And I looked at her because she was like the one working beneath, you know, the, ma the store person who was off on a break. Um, and I went up to the office and walked in and she said, can you go outside? And my uncle's out there. He's get get me some fives and ones. Sorry about that. That's my mouse on the side here messing up. She said, and get me some fives and ones from him. And she gives me this yellow piece of paper with money in it. Only it did not feel right. Like there was something more in it than just money. And my maybe it's telling me my discern my discernment is being turned up. And that's why I want it to be turned up. I want it turned up. But I want to understand the discernment to know what I'm supposed to do too. But in this dream. I, she gave me the paper. I went outside, but I didn't look for nobody out there. I went straight out to find. Well, I did go looking for somebody, but not who I supposed to, not who she said to look for. I went to find Alice, this woman named Alice, and I was going to tell her what was going on. Well, I went walking down toward the end of the sidewalk where the you know where the break area was. They had like one area down at the very end that the smoking people smoked down there. It was it was on the other side of the entrance. And that's probably about a good, I'd say 50, no, more than 50, probably about 100 foot from the entrance or more, 200 foot, basically. It was almost the whole front of the store. And I, uh, I went down there to find her and I saw her. But trying to get to her wasn't easy. There's a lot of people like getting in front of me and, and I kept pushing my way through to get to her. Finally, I got to her and I said, Alice, I said, something isn't right. And she said, what's wrong? And I told her, I said, I told her, I don't know what the girl's name was. I can't remember the name. Anyway, I said, gave me this and I gave it to Alice. And she's like, I said, she said that she needed me to go out to her uncle and get fives and whatever. And I said, I, I can't do this. I said, I I'm sorry, I cannot do this. And uh, she said, okay, she said, we'll take care of it like that. And next thing I know, I'm going back into the store before I get in there. I look up into the sky and there's like something and it, it's not normal flying across the sky. And it was, I can't really, I, it was like a, 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 not a cloud, but it would be similar to a cloud and it was like flowing across and it was like, like lights, like glistening lights going across the sky. And it wasn't like the whole sky. It was just like a, a part. I guess if you were up there, it'd probably be a good three or four yards. Or a mile, but in from where I was standing, it looked maybe about no bigger than maybe eight foot, if that. And uh, it just went like this, you know, across. And I'm like, but where I was busy trying to do the right thing, the godly thing, you know, I was trying to get to tell the truth that this person was going to bring the store down if we didn't watch. And uh, which the store, it's it, the company is like a you know a name brand company, so the, stump, the company would not be involved in it. It would be the person getting fired. But I don't know that she was really doing anything wrong. If it was a test, I needed to pass. I don't know, because sometimes they do. God will not test you, but people will to see if you're loyal to a job. <clears throat> anything. I, only way I know. Only thing I know was I went ahead and I was like you know heading back to the store. Next thing I know, I'm in this house. And there's a bunch of people there. Don't know why there was two supposed stars from, well, Sweet Life and De on deck, or, or the Sweet Life, Sweet Life of Sack and Cody on, you know, it was on Disney Channel. But in this dream, they weren't. They played on Full House. I don't know what the deal was. But the one boy that was supposed to be penniless now or something. In this dream, he was fat, and the other one was skinny. And I'm talking almost like uh, ant anorex anorexic skinny. Okay, I mean, I'm talking like majorly sunken in face and everything. One was being overfed, and the other one being underfed, in other words. And uh, I don't know what that was about. I only seen them for like a second, and I was thinking, what in the world is that about? 
And then I'm like over, and I'm just explaining this guys to you, this to you guys. I don't know what it means. I'm just trying to get you guys to help me to understand, okay? So I'm over there setting like in this one area, and, air, and there's lights in the house at this time. Then all of a sudden, the lights are like, I don't know where the lights went, okay? It's just like all of a sudden, they're going around the house lighting these candles to give light in the house. And you could tell, you could tell like from the, like where the windows were and everything that there wasn't, it wasn't good outside. But inside, it, it was so peaceful and, and, and surreal. It was just like you know, it was really, you didn't, you didn't fear nothing. And I was sitting there, and I remember there was these two other twins. They were boys, and they were young, little young kids. And and like a woman came around. I thought she was her mom, and she was talking to me. And I said, "Well, aren't those?" And she she said something, and I said, "I don't know what I asked her." I said something. She said, "No." She said, "Well, yeah," or something like I can't remember exactly what her response was. I think it was I. Then I, I asked if they weren't they the ones that played in something, or I don't remember exactly. But anyway, she was talking to me. She said, "Well, what happened?" And I was telling her. And while I was talking to her, she said, shh, shh, because someone was coming around and she didn't want them to hear what we were saying. And next thing I know, she's gone. I'm looking and people again are going around trying to light these candles and they're little tiny candles. They were like up toward the ceiling. Okay. And you know, they weren't far from the ceiling. They weren't like against the ceiling, but it was like, you know, I'd say the candle probably about that, about maybe that big, if you know what I'm saying. And they were lighting it to give light off. Although there was other light in the house. The candles weren't the only source of light or something. All I know is it, it just, it, the whole dream felt, it felt rather, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, with these people I know that were on TV, I wasn't like over excited about meeting them. I wasn't excited because they were there. I, did, I had no desire to talk to them. There was nothing about them that thrilled me. I mean, nothing about them that made me feel like I needed to go talk. I can't believe they're here. Uh. No, there wasn't no googly eyes or nothing like that. There wasn't nothing, excitement or nothing. I mean, there was women there that was, I guess, movie movie uh, characters or actors or actresses or whatever, but I didn't pay much attention. I really didn't. It was almost like as if we were on a movie set. I don't know. I, I don't really know, but I think our life's actually a movie set right now because nothing here makes sense to me anymore. Seems like everything in this world is... It, it, it's 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 falling apart, if you know what I mean. Everything is falling apart, and people don't, they aren't really, they're just not, um, it's not the same anymore, brothers and sisters. It's not the same anymore. I know that people are like, well, I know that people are confused, scared. I know others are thinking they know it all and they don't know anything. They don't know what's coming. I feel that Jesus' return is at the door. Many people think it's off for a couple of years. I don't think so. Even if it is, I don't feel that. I feel that it could be at any moment. I don't, honestly, I don't have no desire for this upcoming Friday, which is, you know, the holiday of Christmas. I just, I just don't feel, from what I've seen, out of people in like you know like on Black Friday, uh, people getting ready to rip someone's throat off uh, over a stupid material possession, and 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 everybody is like going and they're buying stuff for people, but you're you're going out there and you're raising up your credit card debt. You know what I'm saying? All oh, the credit carders love that. They do. They love it because you're making their life easy. You're making their you're making their bank account get richer. Um, I'm just telling you, you know, and then, and then you spend the rest of the year, well, if there was going to be a year to spend, most people spend the rest of the year after Christmas complaining and bickering about the bills. You know, oh, I got to pay that. Well, some people don't give it the second thought, you know what I mean? But there's some people out there, they love to say, well, if I didn't have all these credit card bills, well, you know, my answer, my, my answer to your problem is stop charging stuff you don't need. Christmas isn't about going out and buying the best gift for someone. It's giving something from your heart. If you're going to celebrate the holiday of Christmas, Jesus gave of himself, not of his wallet. So when you're going out trying to buy people's stuff instead of making it from your own heart, God gave his heart in his son. He sent his son to die so that we could have life with him forever. People on this earth take the, the season of Christmas to go out and buy big, expensive gifts. To me, it's about someone taking the time to taking the time to go out and really in their heart 
search their heart and think, what could I give this person from me that would show them that I love them and care about them? It shouldn't be about a new TV or a new computer or a new whatever. It should be more about, well, I'm giving you this from the heart, whether it's a letter or a card or whatever. And that shouldn't just be once a day, that, that once a year. That should be every single day of your life you give someone something to lift them up. It's about uplifting people. It's not about overwhelming people. And brothers and sisters, there's so many people out there right now that are have got more than what they need. They have way over the amount of what they need. They don't need anything else. They honestly do not need anything else. They barely need what they've got, you know? I mean, uh, I know with me, I don't need anything. I, I just I just want Jesus. Sorry about that if y'all heard it, but it's called Syria Mist. I just... I don't want anything but Jesus. And I'm telling you today, I feel like, well, you can look um, at my window here. Y'all probably saw it yesterday, and, and you can tell a difference in outside today. You see, it's like totally overcast today. And yesterday, it was like bright out there. It's supposed to be raining by 1045, which is in a little while. They even time the rain now. Isn't that something? Not important, though. Brothers and sisters, something is about to happen. I don't know what it is. I don't know when it is. I don't know why it is. I don't know where it's coming from. Something's about to happen. The one thing I want to hear happen is I, I want to hear the trumpet blow so we can go home. There is just way, way, way too much stuff happening that I... I don't have... I don't have the nerves for this place anymore. I, I don't have the nerves for this place. I really don't. I don't really have anybody that I can confide in. I mean, yes, I have family I love very deeply and I won't confide in them because I know that their idea and my idea are two different things. They believe things that I just don't do. I, I don't celebrate Christmas and most of my family does. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. And don't get me wrong, I love everybody, but don't push what you feel on me and I won't push what I feel on you. That's just the way I feel about it. I love everybody, but I cannot I, I cannot. I just want to be able to. I'm going to love you with a with a love that God has given me. Love me with that same love and respect me. I'm going to respect you. I'm not going off on nobody because you celebrate Christmas or whatever. That's between you and God. I'm no one to judge you, okay? Because none of us are perfect. And you know, and if you're doing it, the, the Bible says, do whatever you do to the glory of God. If you're doing it to the glory of God and not for self edification then that's fine so be it let it be to God be the glory okay I just can't and I won't I love you all I just I'm asking my true brothers and sisters and I know when you guys pray because I can feel the peace I'm asking you guys to pray for us I'm asking you guys to pray for one another spiritual warfare is not it's, it's not um, an easy thing to take there's so many things happening right now, brothers and sisters, that I can't even begin to think of myself. It's like everything is just... I don't know. I don't even understand. I can't even begin to give you my outlook on it because I don't know what my outlook is anymore. I used to know that... I know that I feel that everything is for a reason. This dream I had last night was for a reason. I just don't know what it was. I kind of feel like... We need to be doing the right thing until the Lord comes, regardless of um, what other people see or think. Um, God will give you what you need to know about His coming. and But in the meantime, you need to continue to live in Christ-like attitude, in Christ-like living, in your actions, your words, uh, being Christ-like that you may bring others to the kingdom as well. In that dream, like I was telling you, you know, it's like, when I saw that thing going across the sky, it wasn't like everybody outside. I mean, there was a few that saw it and were really off tucking by it, you know. But not not everybody was paying attention to it. See, it's like, okay, God said there'd be signs in the sun and the stars, you know, and the moon and the heavens. And there's people out there, they were all talking, doing, going about their own business. And this, this really miraculous sign went across and I noticed it, you know, but it wasn't surprising to me that it was, I mean, it was shocking. And if I had actually seen it in real life, I would stop and looked at it to watch what happened. But 
in this dream I looked at it and saw it and I went like that and I just walked on back over to see who I was looking for to find and talk to and all I know is I I, um, I was doing what was right I was letting them know that someone in their company wasn't exactly being trustworthy and it was kind of scary because I knew what I was doing could get me in trouble. I mean, I kind of felt that I could get in trouble for it. Um, I mean, I don't know that... I, I'm not going to say I would really get in trouble for it, but, you know, you just don't know because it's like... Well, you know... Um, you, well, you do know you get in trouble for it, basically. You know there was something not right, and you knew that you had to do what was right, regardless of what it cost you. Well, you know what? Jesus came, and he gave his life. He cost his life to give us life. And I want to give all I can give. And I'm asking you guys to pray that God will use me to the fullest. I know that my, 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 my service to God is here on YouTube and on Facebook, which I'm almost half tempted to close Facebook completely out because I really have no desire to go to it anymore. I honestly have no desire. I have no desire for Facebook at all. No more. Because there's just not nothing on there I want to read about. I mean, yeah, there's Bible scriptures I love. And there's people when I like to read. But it's like I'm not really drawn to go to it like I used to. I don't really feel the need to go to that the Facebook anymore. It's not like it's something that I long to do anymore like I used to. Brothers and sisters, please continue to pray for one another. Jesus is coming soon. And you can tell, like someone was saying, the ones of us that are hanging on by a thread are the ones that's waiting and we know that Jesus is coming and we're anticipating his arrival it's like we're little kids getting ready to go on a trip and we know that it's going to happen we just got to wait till mom and dad's ready to pack the car and go uh, we're so excited but we know it's at the corner you know we're getting ready to leave and this is going to be a trip that no one will ever be hurt no one will ever die no one will ever have sorrow pain or suffering ever again it's going to be a trip that we will be forever forever in the arms of God being able to praise him and worship him you know sometimes in our flesh we can't even begin to understand how much our soul ling longs for you know it ling it really longs to be with Christ because that's where he he's in our soul he's in our soul heart he's not in our he's not in our, our, our earthly given heart he's in the soul that he awoke and there's a heart within the soul that Jesus Christ link is in and it's the soul, which is our God-given, sealed, um, blood-bought part of us that God... God didn't buy this fleshly body. It's going back to the earth. There's nothing nothing in this body is going to be saved for heaven. No. We will resemble who we are, but we'll have a new body, glorified body. No pain, no sorrow, no nothing. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to say is, is that... Um, is that, you know, we, we, we are... We are just... We're so close to going home. But what I'm trying to say, the point I'm trying to get across is this, okay? Um, there's many things going on that we're not, we don't have no control over. I understand that. No control over it. And no matter how hard we try, we need, we need not to try. If it's something to do with the world, let it go. Even if it's a loved one, you know, we've got to give it to God. If we've tried to do what we can do, like with my niece and my nephew, I pray for them. But there's only so much you can do. You can't bog yourself down with it. You can't allow them to be your stumbling block. You've got to give it to God because God knows that we tried. I talked to my, my nephew. I felt like God put it on my heart to talk to him. I gave it to God. My niece... I had her on the Facebook and 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 I saw stuff from her. I'm like, you know, I, I can't do this anymore. I saw her with a girl kissing her on the cheek. Be anybody else, I wouldn't think nothing of it. But being knowing who she is and what she lives like, I could not handle to look at it anymore. I just, I I, I feel like I'm all like my mind's all clouded up. I can't think straight half the time. I can't really talk to many people. I really can't. I don't have. Most people I joke when I'm around because I don't know what else to say. And others that I can talk to, I only get to talk to a couple times a week. You know? I mean, a few times a week. Maybe more than a couple. Maybe two or three times a week. It varies on their work schedule. And, um, well, like I spent time with him 
on the phone talking to Bubby last night about different things. And, and, and we talk about things that other people wouldn't even understand. Like, we talk about how, you know, material possession is not important to us. How we could live in an old shack and be just as happy as we are in the places we have now. God has blessed us with very beautiful homes. His home and my home. And I think all of us in America have very beautiful homes. Compared to, like, people in Africa and Uganda and stuff like that, we have, we have considerably mansions. Even the poorest communities are better than what they are out there. But yet people are never happy. And it seems like if people get moved up, like where they have a better home or something, their whole attitude and their whole who they are changes. They're not the same anymore. Once they get a better home or, you know, a more upset home than what they had before, it's like all of a sudden they're better than the people who are who are their friends before. They don't want nothing to do with the ones they were friends before but because they are beneath them now. You know what I'm going to tell you? If you're one of them kind of people, know this. You're a paycheck from being back there where you were. And you need not to disrespect the people that loved you and was there to support you all the time. You didn't have what you have now. You know what? I have a nice home and everything, but I don't see anyone that I was that I grew up with, which I don't see none of them anyway. But if I seen them, I wouldn't, and they still were in the same position they were, I would not one bit look down on them. I'd be talking to them just like I do you right now. Because you know why? To me, I'm still the same person. I may have a nice home, but you know what? That doesn't make me any better than nobody else. It makes me blessed by God to have what I have. And we need to be thanking God for what we got. We need to be sharing what we got with people that don't have. I'm not saying bring someone in your home, let them live with you. No, it's not a safe thing to do now, not with everything going on. But you know, it doesn't hurt to give someone a sandwich or a cup of water or a glass of milk every once in a while. Or give them a prayer. Pray for them. That's the best gift you can give anybody. Is pray to God for their peace to be. And I do. I pray, God, for all the people I've gr I grew up knowing. I'm talking from the time I was born till now. You know, I'm, I'm just praying, God, that you will please bring peace up over them and bring healing over those who are emotionally distressed and, and have spiritual warfare going. They don't know what it is. I pray that it be open to them what it is, Lord God. And I pray that they seek your will. I pray that for everyone I've ever known, talked to, or seen in my life, the ones who say they know me who didn't know me, who were confused, I pray it for them, Lord God. Just ask you, please, to be with us, guide us, and direct us this day. God, please help us. Please give us understanding, because God, I am just—I don't know what I'm—I don't know what's going on. Now, just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, stay blessed. I don't know what else to say. I'm on here giving you my feelings today, because I don't know what's going on. I don't. There, this just doesn't feel the same anymore to me. This world does not feel like home anymore. It, it, it's just a place I'm passing through. And that's it. I'm ready to go home to be with Jesus. And, you know, if, I, if, if the Lord was to take me and my brother today home, I'd be happy. But I want to be here and do God's will until He's ready for me. Because none of us know what's, what, what tomorrow holds. And, you know, that's one thing you need to remember. Regardless if the rapture's... <laughs> one day or, 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 or six months or a year away you need to be ready every day because you don't know when you're going to draw your last breath you don't know when the lord's going to call you home i saw on facebook this morning where jimmy carter uh, says that he you know he says he hates he hates the, the he hates israel he hates the jew jewish people and the bible says i will bless those who bless you curse those who curse you and his uh, 25 year old grandson uh, had a heart failure right before him um, I, all I can say is, you know, and think about it. Our nation was run by him at one time. He's still considered a president, even though he's no longer in office. He's still considered, and you, you can pretty much say he gives advice to the president who's in office. They're all still getting paid big checks. It's one reason why America don't have no money is because they're paying out ex-presidents. The same amount they made when they were in office, or probably even more now. I don't know if they get a monthly or a yearly allowance of it, you know, but still, it's ridiculous. They can continue their lavish lifestyle where we are, we don't, my brother and people that get disability and Social Security don't even give a, get a cost of living increase this year. All because of someone thinking that they don't need it. He can give the money to someone who don't need it. He can give it to people who are, who hate our nation. Or he can take the money and go on trips that he don't need to go on. Yes, I'm talking about Barack Obama. Brothers and sisters, there are so many. I can't remember all of them, but there are so many unspoken prayer requests. And I'm asking you, Lord, again, take those out of my life who do not belong. You know the ones I question about God because I don't understand why 
they do the things they do. I, I don't understand why they act the way they act, how they talk the way they talk. I just ask you, God, if I'm meant to be in their life, to give me the words to speak to them. And if I'm not, then please just take them out of my life. In Jesus' name, God, I'm asking you to bless us this day. God, and direct us. Keep us safe from danger and harm. Just asking you to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I love you, but Jesus loves you more. See you soon with Jesus. Thank you for watching Last Chance Ministries 2015. Remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming. Don't let no one... Don't let no one take away your joy of seeing his coming. There's a crown in store for those who enjoy and love his coming. I, I can't wait to see him come. I can't. I'm so ready to go. God bless you. See you soon. Bye.